Number 10, Bermuda Triangle. The Bermuda Triangle, also known as the Devil's Triangle, has perplexed sailors and aviators for decades. One of the most famous incidents occurred in 1945 when Flight 19, a group of five US Navy bombers, disappeared without a trace during a training mission. Even more eerie was the disappearance a rescue plane sent to find them. Despite extensive search efforts, no wreckage was ever found. Over the years, numerous ships and aircraft have vanished within the Bermuda Triangle, fueling theories of paranormal activity, extraterrestrial interference or unusual natural phenomena. While most of these mysteries can be attributed to navigational errors, the Bermuda Triangle remains an enigmatic and spine-tingling location. Number 9, The Devil's Sea, or The Dragon's Triangle. Off the coast of Japan lies the Devil's Sea, often referred to as the Dragon's Triangle, with a history of bizarre disappearances. Perhaps the most famous incident was the disappearance of the Japanese research vessel Kayo Maru No. 5 in 1952. The ship vanished without a distress call or any wreckage found. Some attribute these disappearances to magnetic anomalies caused by underwater volcanic activity or methane hydrate eruptions, which would cause ships to lose buoyancy and sink suddenly. While there are rational explanations for many incidents, the reputation of the Devil's Sea as a mysterious and potentially perilous place endures. Number 8. The Underwater City of Dwarka off the coast of India, submerged ruins believed to be the ancient city of Dwarka have captured the imagination of historians and archaeologists alike. Legend has it that Dwarka was founded by Lord Krishna and later submerged by the sea. Excavations have revealed structures and artifacts that suggest a sophisticated ancient civilization, adding to the eerie aura of this underwater city. Exploring these ruins is both an archaeological adventure and a spiritual journey, as divers encounter submerged temples and remnants of a bygone era, shrouded in historical and religious mystique. Number 7. The Sargasso Sea the Sargasso Sea, a region in the North Atlantic Ocean, is known for its vast mats of floating sargassum seaweed. Its eerie reputation is tied to the disorienting experience of sailing through a seemingly endless expanse of tangled seaweed. Historically, sailors feared becoming trapped in the Sargasso, where the calm, windless waters could lead to prolonged voyages and dwindling supplies. Tales of ghost ships and derelict vessels adrift in the Sargasso have added to its mystique, even though many of these stories have been debunked. Today, the Sargasso Sea remains a captivating and haunting part of the ocean's ecosystem. Number 6, Point Nemo. Point Nemo, located in the South Pacific Ocean, is a desolate and remote spot, farther from land than any other point on Earth. The eerie aspect of Point Nemo lies in its isolation and the overwhelming feeling of being utterly alone in the vastness of the ocean. For astronauts aboard the International Space Station, Point Nemo is the closest point on Earth, a fact that adds an unsettling layer to the isolation experienced by those who venture to this remote location on the planet's surface. Number 5. The Black Hole of Andros The underwater cave system off the coast of Andros Island in the Bahamas is a labyrinth of pitch black tunnels and chambers. Its eerie reputation comes from the daunting experience of navigating through narrow, winding passages filled with darkness. Divers who explore these caves are often overwhelmed by a sense of isolation and the fear of getting lost in the inky depths. The Black Hole of Andros is a challenging and eerie destination for experienced cave cave divers seeking both adventure and the thrill of exploring the unknown. Number 4. The USS Oriskany, or the Great Carrier Reef The USS Oriskany, a decommissioned aircraft carrier, was intentionally sunk in 2006 off the coast of Florida to create an artificial reef. Diving around this colossal rusting hulk is eerie due to the juxtaposition of military history and marine life. The ship once played a vital role in the Vietnam War, and exploring its sunken remains can evoke a sense of reverence and eeriness as divers and encounter the ghosts of its past life amid the marine ecosystem that has since made it their home. Number 3. The Mary Celeste's Shipwreck The mystery of the Mary Celeste began in 1872, when the ship was found adrift in the Atlantic Ocean, entirely deserted. 
The crew's disappearance remains one of the greatest unsolved maritime mysteries. The ship was fully seaworthy, with provisions and personal belongings left behind, but there were no signs of a struggle. The eerie tale of the Mary Celeste has spawned countless theories, including piracy, mutiny, and paranormal occurrences. The Mary Celeste remains an enduring maritime mystery, shrouded in speculation and unanswered questions. When the ship was found adrift in the Atlantic Ocean, its crew, including the captain's wife and daughter, had seemingly vanished into thin air. Authorities could never definitively determine the fate of the crew. The ship's logbook revealed no signs of distress or unusual circumstances. The ghostly image of the Mary Mary Celeste sailing aimlessly through the open sea, its crew inexplicably gone, continues to captivate the imagination and inspire tales of maritime enigma. Number 2. The Deep Sea Vents Hydrothermal vents on the ocean floor are eerie and fascinating ecosystems. These vents release superheated water rich in minerals, creating unique habitats for extremophiles, such as tube worms and giant clams, that thrive in the extreme conditions. The eerie aspect of deep sea vents lies in the complete darkness, crushing pressure, and the otherworldly creatures that inhabit that realm. Discovering these vents is like exploring an alien world deep beneath the ocean's surface where life has adapted to thrive in an environment that seems entirely inhospitable to humans. Number 1. The USS Indianapolis Wreck The USS Indianapolis was a US Navy cruiser that played a crucial role in WW2. However, it's best known for its tragic sinking in July 1945, shortly after delivering components for the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. After delivering its cargo, the ship was torpedoed by a Japanese submarine and quickly, and quickly sank. What makes the USS Indianapolis wreck particularly eerie is the harrowing ordeal that followed. Due to a communication error, the sinking was not immediately reported, and the crew was left adrift in shark-infested waters for days. Many perished from exposure, thirst, and shark attacks. Only 317 of the ship's nearly 1,200 crew members survived, making it one of the deadliest shark attacks in history. The wreck of the USS Indianapolis was only discovered in 2017, lying over 18,000 feet below the surface of the Philippine Sea. It serves as a haunting reminder of the ship's tragic history and the ocean's capacity to preserve the eerie remnants of the past. Number 10. Centralia, Pennsylvania, USA Centralia was once a vibrant coal mining town in the heart of Pennsylvania. In the mid 20th century, it boasted a thriving community of over 1,000 residents. The town had the typical features of a small American town, including homes, churches, schools, and businesses. However, Centralia's story took a drastic turn when an underground coal mine fire ignited in 1962. The fire, believed to have been ignited by a trash burning pit, continued to burn relentlessly beneath the town's streets and homes, creating a perilous environment. The fire's dangerous underground conditions, toxic gases, and unstable ground forced the government to condemn Centralia. Residents were gradually relocated and the town's infrastructure was abandoned. Today, Centralia stands as a nearly desolate place, with a dwindling population of fewer than 10 residents. Number 9. Pripyat, Ukraine Pripyat was conceived as a model Soviet city, constructed in the 1970s to house the workers of the nearby Chernobyl nuclear power plant. This modern city featured apartment buildings, schools, kindergartens, a hospital, a cultural center, and even an amusement park. The city's population numbered around 49,000 before the Chernobyl disaster. The town's abrupt closure occurred in 1986, following the catastrophic explosion at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. This nuclear disaster led to the release of dangerous radiation. The entire city was swiftly evacuated, with residents leaving behind personal belongings and the life they once knew. Pripyat, within the Chernobyl exclusion zone, remains highly radioactive, making it one of the most famous ghost towns in the world. Buildings stand in various states of decay, offering a haunting glimpse into the past and the effects of a major nuclear catastrophe. 
Number eight, Hashima Island, Japan. Hashima Island, located off the coast of Nagasaki, Japan, was once a bustling coal mining community. It became a self-sustained island city with high-rise apartment buildings, schools, and recreational facilities to house its residents. Hashima Island is often referred to as Battleship Island due to its distinctive appearance from a distance. The island's abandonment took place in 1970s as coal mining operations began to decline, resulting in the evacuation of its inhabitants. For many years, Hashima Island remained off limits to the public, accessible only to researchers and urban explorers. In recent times, it has gained recognition as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, allowing visitors to explore its decaying buildings, which have been shaped by the elements and the passage of time. Number 7, Bodie, California, USA. Bodie, nestled in the eastern Sierra Nevada mountain range, was a thriving gold mining town during the late 19th century. At its zenith, the population exceeded 10,000 residents, making it a lively and somewhat lawless place. The town featured numerous saloons, general stores, a red light district, and even a Chinatown. Bodie's eventual abandonment can be attributed to the decline of gold reserves in the area and the harsh winters that made life increasingly challenging. By the early 20th century, the town was largely deserted. However, the California State Park System recognized its historical significance and decided to preserve it in a state of arrested decay. Today, Bodie is a well-preserved ghost town, offering visitors a glimpse into the past through its well-maintained structures and artifacts. Number six, Verocia, Cyprus. Verocia, located in Famagusta, Cyprus, was once a thriving tourist resort in the early 1970s. It was renowned for its luxurious hotels, pristine beaches, and vibrant nightlife. Celebrities and tourists flocked to Verocia to enjoy the Mediterranean paradise. The town's abrupt closure stemmed from the Turkish invasion of Cyprus in 1974, which resulted in the division of the island. Verocia was fenced off and abandoned, becoming a ghost town due to ongoing political disputes between Greek and Turkish Cypriots. Its opulent hotels, restaurants, and businesses have been frozen in time, their doors and windows sealed, leaving a surreal and melancholic ambience. Number 5. Kolmenskop, Namibia Kolmenskop, situated in the Namib Desert, was a diamond mining town during the early 20th century. The town boasted grand houses with intricate ornate interiors, a hospital, a theater, and a grand ballroom for the affluent diamond miners and their families. Kolmenskop's decline was the result of depleting diamond reserves. As the mining industry waned, the desert sands gradually consumed the town, infiltrating its once elegant interiors. Today, Kolmenskop is a popular tourist attraction, known for its sand-filled rooms, an eerie reminder of a bygone era and the relentless advance of nature. Number 4. Humberstone and Santa Laura, Chile Humberstone and Santa Laura, nestled in the arid Atacama Desert of Chile, were once prosperous saltpeter mining towns. The towns were home to thousands of workers and their families, featuring theaters, hotels, and schools. Saltpeter was a valuable resource used for fertilizer and explosives. The town's abandonment occurred in the 20th century when synthetic nitrate production replaced the extraction of natural nitrate. The decline of the mining industry led to the town's gradual abandonment. Today, these UNESCO World Heritage Sites stand as haunting ghost towns, their structures well preserved, offering a window into the history of nitrate mining and the lives of those who once called these desolate landscapes home. Number 3. Croco, Italy Croco, a picturesque hilltop town in southern Italy, has a history dating back to the Roman era. The town featured medieval architecture, a castle, and a rich cultural heritage, attracting both residents and visitors alike. Croco's abandonment was triggered by natural disasters, including landslides and earthquakes, as well as unstable geology and poor living conditions. These factors forced the evacuation of Croco's residents in the 1960s. The town now stands as a haunting and picturesque ghost town, per on a hill overlooking the surrounding valley, with its streets and buildings remaining frozen in time. Number 2. Orador sur Glane. France. Before its tragic closure, Orador sur Glane was a peaceful and idyllic French village, characterized by charming homes, shops, and a church. It was known for its tranquility and was home to a tight knit community. The town's fate changed dramatically in 1944 when it became the site of a brutal massacre carried out by the Waffen SS during WW2. In a horrific act, the village was destroyed and its inhabitants were ended. In the aftermath, Orador sur Glane was preserved as a memorial to the victims of the massacre, with a new village established nearby. 
Number one, Pyramidens Svalbard, Norway. Pyramiden, situated on Svalbard, an archipelago in the Arctic Ocean, was a Soviet coal mining town. The town featured schools, cultural facilities, and a towering statue of Lenin. And it was home to hundreds of residents who lived and worked in the harsh Arctic conditions. The closure of Pyramiden in 1998 was due to declining coal production and economic factors. Today, Pyramiden has become a unique and popular tourist destination, offering a glimpse into the Soviet past and the challenges of life in the Arctic. As well well as serving as a testament to the durability of its structures in a harsh climate. Number 10, Abandoned Amusement Park. Deep within the crumbling remains of an abandoned amusement park lies a malevolent presence known as the Cackling Carney. Its ghastly visage combines the grotesque features of a leering clown with a chalk white tattered costume that billows like rags in the wind. The monster's eerie laughter echoes through the decaying attractions, mirroring the joyous voices of long gone visitors. But beware, for those who hear its laughter are drawn into a haunting reverie, caught in a loop of their childhood memories. As the past blends with the present, the park's attractions spring back to life, yet in a disturbing and distorted manner, transforming the place into a surreal nightmare where escape seems impossible. Number 9, Empty School Halls. In the silence of a deserted school at night, the forgotten scholar emerges as a specter of eternal knowledge seeking. This ghostly figure is draped in a time-worn school uniform, clutching dusty, dog-eared textbooks to its chest. Its presence is a reminder of scholarly ambition unfulfilled. The forgotten scholar roams the corridors, challenging unsuspecting trespassers with riddles and forgotten questions from long abandoned textbooks. Those who dare to engage with this phantom find themselves drawn into intellectual duels with the ghost, seeking answers to questions they thought they had left behind in their school days. Number 8. Deserted Shopping Malls Within the cavernous halls of an abandoned mall, the bargain banshee makes its haunt. This ethereal entity takes the form of a shadowy, distorted figure, concealed beneath a spectral shroud of shopping bags that appear to sway in a phantom breeze. As you wander through the eerie aisles of stores that once echoed with consumer frenzy, the banshee beckons with promises of irresistible discounts and deals. But those who fall under its spell soon find themselves ensnared in an endless shopping spree. The ghostly apparitions of mannequins watching with vacant eyes as they are trapped within the mall's eerie embrace, unable to leave. Number 7. Airport Interiors in the hushed hours of a late night airport, the terminal traveler materializes as a spectral wanderer, seemingly lost in the corridors of time, just like you will be. Clad in a vintage travel attire, laden with luggage from eras past, this ghostly figure engages in surreal conversations with anyone who crosses its path. It whispers tales of forgotten journeys and obscure destinations, offering flights to places beyond imagination. Those who accept its invitations embark on flights to the unknown, where adventure and uncertainty entwine, leaving passengers in a liminal world where time and destination remain uncertain. Number 6, Elevator Interiors. Inside the confined space of an elevator, the ascension spirit reveals itself. A spectral being draped in ethereal robes with a veiled face, it ushers you into the elevator with a knowing nod. As the doors close, you find yourself in a metaphysical elevator ride, guided by the spirit's cryptic words and wisdom. In this journey between floors and dimensions, you are challenged to confront your inner self, seeking profound insights and revelations that will guide you as the doors finally reopen to your physical reality. Number 5. Empty Parking Lots in the heart of a desolate parking lot, this solitude shade emerges. The spectral figure appears as a melancholic specter, draped in a flowing gown that flutters like a whisper in the breeze. The shade beckons to lost souls, inviting them to share their stories and burdens. As they open up, the spectral figure absorbs their sorrows, leaving those it encounters with a newfound sense of lightness and peace. The Solitude Shade is a compassionate entity that transforms solitude and emptiness into moments of emotional release and healing. Number 4. Unfinished Construction Sites 
Amid the skeletal frames of an unfinished construction site, the Wandering Welder takes shape. This spectral entity is a fusion of industrial machinery and ethereal shadows, shrouded in the scent of molten metal. It challenges those who dare to trespass within its domain to take up the tools and complete the unfinished work. Success comes at a dangerous cost. For those who accept the challenge find themselves bound to an endless cycle of labor, toiling in the eerie twilight of construction's liminal space. Number 3. Long Empty Corridors in the seemingly never-ending corridors of a government building, the bureaucratic banshee materializes. Its ghostly presence is draped in formal attire, clutching a never-ending stack of paperwork. As you navigate this bureaucratic nightmare, the banshee challenges you to decipher incomprehensible forms and navigate a labyrinth of regulations. Each step through the endless corridors tests your patience, wit, and understanding of the bureaucratic maze that has become a nightmarish liminal space of endless red tape. Number 2. Foggy Landscapes Amid the dense, fog-shrouded forest, the misty enigma takes form as an elusive figure, half concealed within the swirling mists. Its eyes seem to pierce through the veil of reality and into other realms. The misty enigma leads curious wanderers on enigmatic quests through the fog, unveiling mysteries and unlocking secrets hidden within the mist. Its riddles and challenges are both alluring and perplexing, turning the misty landscape into a realm of enchantment and intrigue where the boundary between the known and unknown blurs into a liminal dreamscape. Number 1. Industrial Warehouses Within the abandoned industrial warehouse, the factory fiend manifests. This spectral entity is a conglomerate of mechanical parts and ever-shifting shadows, radiating an eerie mechanical hum. It challenges those who trespass within its domain to repair and restore the long abandoned machinery. Success comes at a perilous cost. For those who accept the challenge are, dra are drawn into a ceaseless cycle of mechanical toil, where the machinery itself takes on a life of its own, perpetuating a sense of industrial liminality. Number 10. Moonville Tunnel if you're out on a hike in the Zaleski State Forest in Ohio, you might encounter this normal looking bridge, or so it seems. Built in 1856, this tunnel was created for a railroad to transport coal around the state and at that time. It was the only way to go in and out of the town of Moonville. Although the tunnel served its function and is still up to this day, the one fatal flaw about it was the limiting space it offered to the pedestrians walking through. Basically, when a train would pass through the tunnel, it would give little to no space at all for people to walk through, and you could see how this could be detrimental considering it was the only way in and out of the town. Over the years, many unfortunate people would be struck by the train while walking through this tunnel, and many of the bodies were buried in the surrounding forests. By 1947, the town of Moonville was eventually abandoned, but this place still remains a hiking spot for many. Number 9. Abandoned Subway Cincinnati, Ohio actually has a subway station and after years of construction, it would never become operational and now it just sits under the city abandoned. Much of the reasons for its closure was due to the stock market crash in the 1920s and the depression that hit in the 30s. The city didn't know what to do with the place, so they tried to give tours, but eventually conditions of the subway would make it too dangerous for anyone to enter. Many urban explorers and paranormal investigators have found their way to the subway system and many come back saying that this place Place is filled with various spirits. Some of the reports include hearing footsteps in the dark and moving shadows. Others have claimed to be chased out of the tunnels, but many think it's just homeless people. Regardless, you are not bound to have a good time if you decide to enter these abandoned tracks. Number 8. Melonhead Road In Kirtland, Ohio sometime in the 1970s, there were multiple reports of creatures with huge bald heads who would stalk this road and the woods of Northeast Ohio. Many people claim that these creatures are the product of failed government testing on humans which they tried to hide from the public. But it seems like they didn't do a good job of hiding since they are still reported around the area. Others believed that melon heads are the product of failed experiments from a man named Dr. Crow. It was said that Dr. Crow either made a deal with the local mental hospital or kidnapped patients. He would do experiments on those with deformed or misshapen heads in hopes to minimize the size, but after his doing multiple lobotomies, their heads would grow to extreme sizes, giving them the name Melon Heads. Number 7. Twin City Opera House 
In the middle of McConnellsville is the infamous theater known as the Twin City Opera House. It was built in 1892 and serves the same purpose as it did in the beginning, which was supposed to be both a theater and government office. Much of the paranormal activity in this building is found in the basement, where there are multiple reports of black shadows that appear from the grounds and walls. Back in the 1920s, a man was executed in the basement which many believe is still there. However, the most infamous ghost is the ghost of an usher who used to work there. He would occasionally walk up to people only to say nothing and just stare. So you could only imagine how awkward this encounter would be until you realize it was a ghost the whole time. Number 6, Walhalla Road. Located in Columbus, Ohio is the infamous Walhalla Road. Not infamous for anything good, but for reasons that will make you avoid this road at all costs. One legend of the road goes that in the 1950s there was once a man named Dr. Mooney who lived here alongside his wife and offspring. They were a pretty normal family until the man started to show more and more signs of insanity every day. Then one day he snapped and supposedly ended his wife and all all his offspring and let them on the side of the road. Number 5, Rogues Hollow. A few miles southwest of Akron is a former mining town known as Rogues Hollow. And from the name, you will see why it's Ohio's own version of Sleepy Hollow. Now, like many rural areas in the state, Rogues Hollow is a perfect place to hike, eat, and see nature, but it's recommended that you do all these things in the day and not in the night. In 1957, a local named Russell Frey wrote about the area saying, quote, Ghosts are best seen in the hollow on a moonlit night when they are at large. Ghosts are best seen in the hollow on a moonlit night when there are large fleecy clouds overhead. Then the hollow fairly comes alive with the residents of the spirit world. It's said that you can see more as twilight turns to pitch blackness of the night. Then you can see nooks and crannies with shadowy forms on the move. There's much to see here. Number 4, Satan's Hollow. You won't find it on a map, and you can't see it from the road, but beyond the woods in a quiet blue ash community, some say exists a portal to hell, nicknamed Satan's Hollow. Being part of an old sewage system, the tunnels are said to be haunted by a shadow man and other angry spirits. And supernatural markings are seen all over the tunnel walls. According to popular belief, Satanists used to use the tunnel system as their headquarters mainly to get around in secrecy, and deep inside the tunnels are a supposed altar room where they would commit violent rituals including sacrificing animals and even some humans. The point of sacrificing humans was to summon Lucifer the devil, and many believe they succeeded, which is why the tunnels are now left abandoned. Over the years, several ghost hunters and paranormal investigators have visited this site, claiming to have communicated with spirits, but have warned not to visit the area since the area is the new hotspot for spirits. Number 3, The Defiance Werewolf in the summer of 1972, the people of Defiance, Ohio were claiming they were being terrorized by a lone werewolf. The sightings of this werewolf would be typically at nights nearby the railroad tracks. The beast was reported to be 7 to 9 feet tall, very hairy and wielding a club. It's said that two men who were working on the tracks at night, one of the two men, Ted Davis, would report to police that he was attacked by a half man, half dog creature. He also reported that the creature attacked him with a club other than claws, which was very odd due to his description of the creature. Multiple railroad workers would also report similar encounters at night, as well as a couple of women said it even tried to get into their houses by rattling the doorknobs. Luckily for the locals, after the summer, the beast almost seemed to vanish out of existence, but the story still lingers and perhaps the werewolf is still out there hiding. Number 2, Helltown, Ohio. Boston Mills, now known as Helltown, was bought out by the US government to make way for the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. However, rumor has it that this town was closed down because of an accidental chemical leak, causing citizens to mutate. To this day, the town remains completely abandoned. However, people who visit the area have reported seeing many disfigured, mutated people hiding throughout the area. And to make matters worse, apparently there is a satanic church located at the town center. In this church, are said to be mutated people who kidnap and sacrifice outsiders. The area is littered with even more dark legends, including an old abandoned school bus where a series of incidents took place. It's said that if you peek into the windows, you can either see the ghost of people or the ender behind it all. 
Number one, Athens Asylum. This mental asylum stood from 1874 to up until 1993. However, some pretty scary stuff occurred within those walls. Patients were mistreated, physically abused, not fed, strapped to their beds, and even lobotomized, which was basically brain surgery before we knew how to do proper brain surgery, which caused many patients to suffer from life-changing side effects and disabilities. One particular patient named Margaret Schilling went missing in 1979 for 42 days. Her corpse would be later found in an abandoned area in the hospital. The odd thing was that her body was found naked with her clothes folded neatly beside her, and it began rotting so bad that it left a permanent stain behind that could still be seen to this day. With witnesses saying that they saw her ghost trying to leave the room she was stuck in, with the acts of horror and mistreatment that went down on this asylum, that went on in this asylum, it's no wonder the ghosts of the abused patients still linger in the building. <laughs> Pyramiden Svalbard, Norway. Pyramiden, situated on Svalbard, an archipelago in the Arctic Ocean, was a Soviet coal mining town. The town featured schools, cultural facilities, and a towering statue of Lenin. And it was home to hundreds of residents who lived and worked in the harsh Arctic conditions. The closure of Pyramiden in 1998 was due to declining coal production and economic factors. Today, Pyramiden has become a unique and popular tourist destination, offering a glimpse into the Soviet past and the challenges of life in the Arctic. As well as serving as a testament to the durability of its structures in a harsh climate. Orador sur Glane, France. Before its tragic closure, Orador sur Glane was a peaceful and idyllic French village, characterized by charming homes, shops, and a church. It was known for its tranquility and was home to a tight knit community. The town's fate changed dramatically in 1944 when it became the site of a brutal massacre carried out by the Waffen SS during WW2. In a horrific act, the village was destroyed and its inhabitants were ended. In the aftermath, Orador sur Glane was preserved as a memorial to the victims of the massacre, with a new village established nearby. Number 8. Hashima Island, Japan Hashima Island, located off the coast of Nagasaki, Japan, was once a bustling coal mining community. It became a self-sustained island city with high-rise apartment buildings, schools, and recreational facilities to house its residents. Hashima Island is often referred to as Battleship Island, due to its distinctive appearance from a distance. The island's abandonment took place in 1970s, as coal mining operations began to decline, resulting in the evacuation of its inhabitants. For many years, Hashima Island remained off-limits to the public, accessible only to researchers and urban explorers. In recent times, it has gained recognition as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, allowing visitors to explore its decaying buildings, which have been shaped by the elements and the passage of time. Number 7. Bodie, California, USA Bodie, nestled in the eastern Sierra Nevada mountain range, was a thriving gold mining town during the late 19th century. At its zenith, the population exceeded 10,000 residents, making it a lively and somewhat lawless place. The town featured numerous saloons, general stores, a red light district, and even a Chinatown. Bodie's eventual abandonment can be attributed to the decline of gold reserves in the area and the harsh winters that made life increasingly challenging. By the early 20th century, the town was largely deserted. However, the California State Park System recognized its historical significance and decided to preserve it in a state of arrested decay. Today, Bodie is a well-preserved ghost town, offering visitors a glimpse into the past through its well-maintained structures and artifacts. Number 6. Verocia, Cyprus Verocia, located in Famagusta, Cyprus, was once a thriving tourist resort in the early 1970s. It was renowned for its luxurious hotels, pristine beaches, and vibrant nightlife. Celebrities and tourists flocked to Verocia to enjoy the Mediterranean paradise. The town's abrupt closure stemmed from the Turkish invasion of Cyprus in 1974, which resulted in the division of the island. Verocia was fenced off and abandoned, becoming a ghost town due to ongoing political disputes between Greek and Turkish Cypriots. Its opulent hotels, restaurants, and businesses have been frozen in time, their doors and windows sealed, leaving a surreal and melancholic ambience. 
Number 5. Kolmenskop, Namibia Kolmenskop, situated in the Namib Desert, was a diamond mining town during the early 20th century. The town boasted grand houses with intricate ornate interiors, a hospital, a theater, and a grand ballroom for the affluent diamond miners and their families. Kolmenskop's decline was the result of depleting diamond reserves. As the mining industry waned, the desert sands gradually consumed the town, infiltrating its once elegant interiors. Today, Kolmenskop is a popular tourist attraction, known for its sand-filled rooms, an eerie reminder of a bygone era and the relentless advance of nature. Number 4. Humberstone and Santa Laura, Chile Humberstone and Santa Laura, nestled in the arid Atacama Desert of Chile, were once prosperous saltpeter mining towns. The towns were home to thousands of workers and their families, featuring theaters, hotels, and schools. Saltpeter was a valuable resource used for fertilizer and explosives. The town's abandonment occurred in the 20th century when synthetic nitrate production replaced the extraction of natural nitrate. The decline of the mining industry led to the town's gradual abandonment. Today, these UNESCO World Heritage Sites stand as haunting ghost towns, their structures well preserved, offering a window into the history of nitrate mining and the lives of those who once called these desolate landscapes home. Number 3. Krakow, Italy Krakow, a picturesque hilltop town in southern Italy, has a history dating back to the Roman era. The town featured medieval architecture, a castle, and a rich cultural heritage, attracting both residents and visitors alike. Krakow's abandonment was triggered by natural disasters, including landslides and earthquakes, as well as unstable geology and poor living conditions. These factors forced the evacuation of Krakow's residents in the 1960s. The town now stands as a haunting and picturesque ghost town perched on a hill overlooking the surrounding valley, with its streets and buildings remaining frozen in time. Pripyat, Ukraine Pripyat was conceived as a model Soviet city. Constructed in the 1970s to house the workers of the nearby Chernobyl nuclear power plant, this modern city featured apartment buildings, schools, kindergartens, a hospital, a cultural center, and even an amusement park. The city's population numbered around 49,000 before the Chernobyl disaster. The town's abrupt closure occurred in 1986, following the catastrophic explosion at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. This new nuclear disaster led to the release of dangerous radiation. The entire city was swiftly evacuated, with residents leaving behind personal belongings and the life they once knew. Pripyat within the Chernobyl exclusion zone remains highly radioactive, making it one of the most famous ghost towns in the world. Buildings stand in various states of decay, offering a haunting glimpse into the past and the effects of a major nuclear catastrophe. Centralia, Pennsylvania, USA Centralia was once a vibrant coal mining town in the heart of Pennsylvania. In the mid 20th century, it boasted a thriving community of over 1,000 residents. The town had the typical features of a small American town, including homes, churches, schools, and businesses. However, Centralia's story took a drastic turn when an underground coal mine fire ignited in 1962. The fire, believed to have been ignited by a trash burning pit, continued to burn relentlessly beneath the town's street and homes, creating a perilous environment. The fire's dangerous underground conditions, toxic gases, and unstable ground forced the government to condemn Centralia. Residents were gradually relocated and the town's infrastructure was abandoned. Today, Centralia stands as a nearly desolate place, with a dwindling population of fewer than 10 residents. Number 10. Larnock Castle One of the spookiest places in New Zealand, the Larnock Castle, is famous for being one of the few castles in the country. The story goes as follows. The castle's ballroom was gifted by Larnock to his daughter, Katie, on her 21st birthday. Unfortunately, she passed away young due to typhoid cancer. His first two wives also passed away while in this castle, and he himself took his own life after learning of his son and third wife's affair. Later, the castle was also a mental hospital during the international conflicts. While Katie is seen swirling in the ballroom, he too has been spotted roaming around the corridors. Instances of people being pushed, touched on the back, and others have also been reported. Number 9. King Seat Hospital This chilling former psychiatrist 
Psychiatric Hospital was active between 1932 and 1999. Today, people claim it is one of the most haunted places in New Zealand. Allegedly, patients endured horrific abuse. While more nurses passed away at the hospital than patients due to apparent emotional and psychological abuse. People claim that grey nurses roam the corridors at night and screams can be heard. However, spookers own the property now and have turned it into a haunted tourist attraction. Number 8. Waitomo Caves Hotel Known as one of the most haunted hotels in New Zealand, people have seen, felt and heard creepy noises and screams. While it is said that former staff members roam the hallways and an execution executed Maori princess often pulls at bedsheets and moans in the attic. Interestingly, another report claims that a male guest ended himself in room 14 after an encounter with the princess, and blood sometimes drips from his bathtub. Plus, a maid's child who passed away in the hotel can sometimes be heard laughing, and hotel guests' kids have described a mysterious boy following them. Indeed, this hotel is seriously spooky. Number 7. Napier Prison Since being built in 1862, this place was home to a prison, a mental hospital, and an orphanage. The three main creepy things. Drenched in an eerie atmosphere, you can bet it's as creepy as it sounds. Supposedly, serial executioners haunt the prison. Ghostly faces have been seen, terrifying noises can be heard, and more. The prison even intrigued Ghost Hunters, an international TV series that filmed there back in 2011. If you're not a scaredy cat like myself, you can head on a prison tour to try to encounter the supernatural yourself. Number 6. Lake Alice Hospital Another brutal psychiatric hospital that will have you jumping out of your trousers. Factually, patients were subjected to inhumane abuse here, such as electroconvulsive therapy, SA, and physical abuse. Additionally, former staff described being touched and feelings of coldness and more. The hospital closed in 1999. What happened here is unspeakable, and it reminds us of a disturbing horror film. Certainly, it's one of the most haunted places in New Zealand. Number 5. Tongarakau Ghost Town This place is so spooky that it's even called a ghost town. Signs to the town of Tongarakau say ghost town, accompanied by goat skins slung on either side. Should you dare to turn into the town on this secluded section of the Forgotten World Highway in the North Island, you'll be met with a campground surrounded by rolling hills and working farms. Things have changed since the tunneling and railway days where 1,200 people used to live there. Now, well, it's a ghost town. Number 4. Otira Tunnel if an 8.5 kilometer or 5.3 mile tunnel running right underneath the Southern Alps wasn't scary enough, the Otira Tunnel is also said to be one of the most haunted places in New Zealand. One of the people who passed away during its construction, a Scottish construction worker, is said to be wandering around trying to find his way home. Not that you will get much chance to help him as you pass through the tunnel inside the Transalpine that goes through Arthur's Pass. Number 3. Alberton Hotel Retired Heritage New Zealand employee John Webster was looking down from Alberton's upper veranda and saw a lady on the lawn wearing a long, old-fashioned dress. He only saw her momentarily, then she was gone. He went downstairs to see who it was dressed up for the occasion, but she was nowhere to be found. John was very attuned to experiencing ghosts of people and animals during his time as curator at Ewell where he and others witnessed such sightings. Ronnie didn't see ghosts at either Ewelm or Alberton, even though she worked weekly at both. But she did confess to saying that there was something strange about the Alberton nursery and the blue room, alongside having a feeling of unhappiness or sadness there. Number 2. Ewelm Cottage Ewelm Cottage is a historic house on Air Street in the suburb of Parnell, Auckland, New Zealand. Ewelm Cottage is named after the church of the same name. It was built mostly of cowrie in 1863 and 1864 for Church of England clergyman Reverend Vesessimus Lush and family while he was vicar of All Saints Church Hoek. This was so that his sons could attend the Church of England Grammar School in Parnell. 
Regarded as one of the most haunted places in the city, it is claimed to be haunted by spirits of women and children. The house is reputedly haunted in particular by a young girl who has reportedly appeared by an oak tree in the garden. According to a former curator of the historic home, sightings of ghosts at Ewelm Cottage date back to 1945. Because of claimed hauntings, it was visited by a team of paranormal investigators in 2005 and featured on Ghost Hunt, a New Zealand television show. Number 1. The Pump House Theater The Pump House Theater is located in the picturesque Killarney Park, which sits on the edge of the equally beautiful and intriguing Lake Pubuke. The Pump House operates as a venue for hire for the performing arts. It hosts a wide range of theater from plays, musicals, dance, stand-up comedy, and many other kinds of events. But those who find themselves in the Pump House Theater alone at night have reported a presence in the building. Is the resident spirit of the theater awaiting their cue to take center stage? Well, Lake Pubuke is a heart-shaped freshwater lake formed around 140,000 to 150,000 years ago, occupying a volcanic crater between the suburbs of Takapuna and Milford on Auckland's North Shore. The heart shape is a result of a formation by the linking of two circular craters. In Maori folklore, a myth surrounding the lake tells of a Tupua couple, the children of the fire gods, quarreling with Mahuika, the fire goddess, about their home on the mainland being destroyed by Matahoa a god of earthquakes and eruptions sent by Mahuika. Lake Pupuke resulted from the ensuing destruction, causing Rangitoto Island to rise from the sea. The mists surrounding Rangitoto at certain times are considered the tears of sadness from the Tupua couple, grieving for their former home. Thanks for watching.